Welcome to the Saving Civilization podcast. In this episode, we examine the worst form of government. This is the extreme form of autocracy called totalitarianism. It held sway during much of the 20th century and resulted in the misery and deaths of hundreds of millions of people. Here we examine the characteristics of this type of regime and then look at a special modern case which is the state of North Korea. The 20th century was the bloodiest on record. With over 100 million deaths recorded under the brutal regimes that existed in Germany, Russia, and China. These regimes under Hitler, Stalin, and Mao, respectively, are called totalitarian. It is the most extreme or hard version of authoritarianism in which violence is overt and used to subdue the population. Examples of modern-day totalitarian states include North Korea, Syria, and Afghanistan. Totalitarian states have extreme political repression, violation of human rights, absence of any democratic pretensions, complete control over the country's economy, widespread censorship, surveillance and propaganda, use of state terrorism, and a personality cult around the leader. Many also employ prison camps, a secret police, racist and religious persecution, death penalties and show trials, fraudulent or non-existent elections, possession of weapons of mass destruction, and state-sponsored mass murder and genocide. In comparison, the spin dictators of the 21st century may be considered soft versions of authoritarianism because they use violence to a lesser degree. Whereas totalitarians promote a specific ideology like fascism or communism, the modern-day dictators usually do not and instead pretend to be democracies. Whereas autocracies are concerned mostly with political power and allow some degree of freedom, totalitarians attempt to completely reshape society and control the thoughts of their citizens. Totalitarians use violence and propaganda to make individuals conform to the state ideology. They practice, in effect, what might be called mind control. Their goal is to remake human nature. According to Kaplan in 2012, the leader creates and promotes the ideology. The party then become the early adopters who enable and carry out his orders. The secret police and the army then are the enforcers and control of the economy provides the resources that allow it all to happen. Totalitarians pose an existential threat, meaning they are so dangerous that they could lead to the extinction of humanity. If we consider just civilian deaths, the Soviets were estimated to have killed 20 million, the Nazis 25 million, and Maoist China 65 million. This does not include military deaths such as those during World War II, which add to the toll considerably. A serious question we can ask is how long totalitarian regimes will last. Most, quite fortunately, have been short-lived. If this is due to some inherent quality, then humanity is lucky. If instead these regimes are capable of being extended in length indefinitely or of spreading worldwide, then they pose a serious global catastrophic risk. One factor that can end a totalitarian regime is if they are too expansionistic and fight wars they cannot win, as was the case with Nazi Germany. Another is dissent from within. It can be argued that totalitarians are most stable when they exert the greatest amount of repression. But on the other hand, extreme repression can also foment internal rebellion. 
Regime change and the question of succession can also end totalitarian rule. Historically, new leaders have moderated the previous hardline policies of their predecessors. This may especially be the case if their citizens have exposure to the outside world and can see that people in other countries are living happier lives. This can explain why countries like North Korea and modern-day China are attempting to seal themselves off from the rest of the world. The development of technology enables totalitarians. They may be less hesitant to use nuclear and biological weapons, and if so, could wipe out a significant portion of humanity. Technology can also enable these states to monitor, control, and brainwash their citizenry. China is seeing much success in the use of its online social credit system to keep track of its people rewarding them for what it considers appropriate behavior and penalizing them otherwise. Present and future totalitarians may use brain imaging to observe people's thoughts and drugs to make them cooperative. They could also employ genetic testing to detect those with a predisposition to rebellion. Individuals with such genes could be sterilized or even killed. More significantly, techniques like CRISPR could be used to remove such genes from the entire population. And life extension techniques could be applied to the leader and party members so that the issue of leadership succession is delayed or extended forever. However, these very same technologies could be used to help counter a totalitarian threat. Brain scans and genetic screening could be used to help identify those with authoritarian dispositions, and drugs could be used to enhance intelligence, creativity, and critical thinking. The problem, though, is that totalitarians are much more likely to use these techniques. Ethical concerns in free countries might block or delay their implementation. It is perhaps appropriate to end this section with a quote by George Orwell's novel, 1984. If you want a picture of the future, imagine a boot stamping on a human face. Forever. Examples of older totalitarian regimes are fairly well documented now and are not going to be described next. Instead, we will focus on modern day totalitarian regimes using the case of North Korea. North Korea is perhaps the most totalitarian regime in the modern era. It has a highly centralized government with extreme control over every aspect of society. Kim Jong-un and his family have ruled the country with an iron fist. They are highly militaristic and have been active in developing weapons of mass destruction. The international community has had little success over the past few decades in reining in their nuclear missile program. The North Korean government does not tolerate any internal dissent. Perceived political opponents are routinely executed or sent to prison camps where they are tortured and placed into forced labor. Citizens are called upon to work on infrastructure projects without even being paid. Through mismanagement and its policy of isolationism, the country has suffered numerous catastrophes, including droughts, flooding, and mass starvation. Needless to say, there is no free press, opposition, political parties, or respect for human rights in this country. Citizens cannot travel from one part of the country to another or travel abroad without government approval. Border guards have been ordered to shoot anyone on sight without permission. And North Koreans can be sentenced to 15 years in prison for consuming foreign media on any type of device. From the age of only four years old, children in North Korea are indoctrinated into idolizing Kim and their family. They are fed systematic lies about the history of their country and the outside world. Kim is referred to as dear leader and given the status of a cult figure. 
Americans must be referred to as American bastards or Yankee devils. So North Korea is clearly an example of hell on earth. This is what happens when people are treated like cattle, whose only purpose is to serve the state. This should be a warning to all those who support authoritarians. Once autocrats seize power, they do anything to maintain it and to e increase control over their population. These leaders have little concern for anybody other than themselves.